close your eyes and keep your mind with the breath, all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. Your ability to keep the mind here allows the mind to settle down. When the mind can settle down, it can get some peace and well-being inside. This is one of your inner treasures, a state of mind where you can rest the mind and be at peace. Without this, then we just go crazy. We need to have time to be still, 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 to let the mind gather its strength to heal its wounds and to be ready to deal with whatever comes up. You have to regard this as one of your treasures. So you look after it the same way that you would look after a treasure. In fact, it's a lot more valuable than the most other treasures we have. The real treasures are the ones that we create inside, which we create through our generosity, we create through our virtue, and we, cre we create through our meditation. These things are genuinely ours. Nobody can take them away from us. If you've been generous, nobody can take that away. If you've been virtuous, nobody can take that away. The problem is that other people may not be able to take these things away, but we, we trash them. We have the opportunity to be generous, and we don't take it. We've got our virtues going, we've got, taken the precepts, and then we decide to break some, and just on a whim. And as for stillness of mind, that's one of the first things that gets lost. The least little thing that grabs your interest, you're running out after something else. And you've thrown away what you have of real value. So you learn, have, have to learn how to appreciate these things. These are your treasures. We live in this world. We're born into a world with a lot of uncertainty. Even the people who cared for us, our parents, when we were young, they're subject to aging, illness, and death. Our friends, our, everybody that we love is subject to aging, illness, and death. The people we hope to depend on, they can stay for a while and then they go. And it's our own bodies. Even our own bodies aren't all that reliable. So what you have to do is develop treasures inside that you can depend on. We talk about taking refuge in the Buddha and the Dharma and the Sangha. Well, this is what it, this is what it means. You take refuge in their virtues as you develop them inside. You take them as your outside example. These are how wise people act. These are the teachings of wise people, people who found genuine happiness. And then you try to develop those within you. We need the outside refuge because there's so many bad examples outside. People say you're going to get happy by buying this or doing things that are underhanded or doing things that are not moral. And it's good to have good examples in life because as the world changes, it keeps changing in directions that we don't want it to go. But you want to make sure that your inner treasures stay solid. Whether other people throw their treasures away, that's their business. You can't prevent that. You can help them see the value of their own treasures, but that's about as far as it goes. But you really do have to look after your own, because these really are your treasures. As I said, no one can take them away from you. Even death doesn't take them away. So learn how to value things like this. Just a peaceful state of mind, staying with a breath. It may not seem like much, but if you can get it going, you find that it really is an inner refuge, something you really can depend on. All the good things that you do, these are your refuge. They create the world in which you live, and so try to create it, what, to create it well, to create a good world. Each of us lives in our own world, so whichever part of this world is your world, your world of your experience, make it a good world. At the very least, you'll be a good example to other people, and you find something really reliable inside, something you can depend on as, as other things change. That's a genuine treasure.